What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about fatty liver. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. So there was a recent article in Frontiers in Nutrition Journal looking at treating non-alcoholic fatty liver disease using low-carb diets versus low-fat diets and kind of everything in between. They were kind of looking at, all right, is one type of diet better than another type of diet for reducing liver fat? And they also looked at liver enzymes and those sorts of things. In the context of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, when calories are equal. Equated. There were 15 studies that met the inclusion criteria, which is basically participants had to have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease with basically no other comorbidities and they couldn't be pregnant or nursing or things like that. So basically adults over age 18 who had fatty liver who didn't have other comorbidities. Why is it important to look at non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is a leading cause of liver disease and it's also associated with metabolic syndrome and reductions in insulin sensitivity and type 2 diabetes. So so what did the researchers find? Across the board, they really found no differences between low carb and low fat diets when calories were equal. They found that most of the benefits on liver fat over the long term were simply due to reducing calories and body weight and that reduction in liver fat was mostly a function of overall fat loss. They did show that early on, like in the first 48 hours, that a low carb diet could reduce intrahepatic lipids more quickly than a low fat diet. But at the end of 11 weeks, there was no differences between the two in terms of actual liver fat reduction. Both were equally effective at reducing liver fat. So what does this mean for you? Well, if you have NAFLD or you're concerned about liver fat and you want to reduce it, it seems that getting in a calorie deficit, losing a significant amount of body fat, and then being able to maintain it is the most most important aspect of reducing liver fat. Now, if you're really concerned about reducing your intrahepatic lipids more quickly, and I guess you could start with a low carb diet, but in the long run, it doesn't seem to make any difference. And they did show that in terms of liver enzymes, that a low fat diet might be slightly better than a low carb diet in terms of reducing liver enzymes. As for my take on this, it's pretty consistent with what I've been recommending for a long time now, which is the most important thing is being in a calorie deficit and losing body fat if you're overweight or in this case have fatty liver. So being able to get into a consistent calorie deficit, lose a significant amount of fat from both fat mass and liver fat is gonna be your best bet. And the best way to do that is to use the dietary preference that is easiest for you to adhere to. So if that's low carb, great. If that's low fat, great. If that's ketogenic, great. If it's kind of a mix, great. Mediterranean diet, whatever. Doesn't appear to matter that much. What appears to matter is being consistent. And this is what we tell everyone who uses our app. Consistency and adherence is what's most important. Compliance is the science. I know it's not sexy, but it's the truth. When we equate calories between different diets, and especially if protein is equated, we just don't see big differences in pretty much any kind of health marker. The only caveat to that is diets that don't have enough fiber or have too much saturated fat may have negative effects outside of the caloric and protein content of it. But if you're getting enough protein, you're in a calorie deficit, you're getting enough fiber, and you're not eating too much saturated fat, the likelihood is you are going to have really great improvements, not just to your body composition, but also to your health markers. But again, the most important part is finding something you can be consistent with. So if you're trying to force yourself to do a low carb diet because you think it's better for your health and you find that you're just falling off the wagon so much because you can't be compliant, then a low carb diet isn't what's best for you. But if you find that a low carb diet is super easy for you, you can be consistent with it, then hey, maybe that is best for you. But what seems to be easiest to stick to for each individual appears to be quite individual. Find the diet that is the least restrictive form of restriction for you. And that's why with our app, Carbon Diet Coach, we have several different dietary preferences. So you can do a balanced diet, you can do a low fat diet, you can do a low carb diet, you can do a ketogenic diet, you can do a plant-based diet, and pretty much anything in between because you can also, within each of those dietary preferences, adjust your ratio to carbohydrates and fats as well as protein and shimmy those a little bit. So you can have a wide spectrum of macro breakdowns to follow so that you can find something that's easiest to adhere to for you. So if you're interested in Carbon Diet Coach, make sure you click the link in the description and I will catch you guys next week.